How's it going guys? Welcome to another periodic check-in where I like to pretty much show you guys what characters I'm working on, what I've already completed, um, as well as my cards, and overall my future plans for the game in general. And with the addition of the Dream Enhancement, you're going to see some familiar faces here. If I've taken characters to 140, I want to talk about them just a little bit. And this is also an opportunity for you guys to see who I have at 140 or maybe make suggestions of who you'd want to see me take to 140. Maybe you want to see a video made over them. So definitely be sure to check out other content that I've made and without further ado. Now for the first 140, and I'm sure a lot of people's first 140, we have Sephiroth here. He's somebody to this day is just really fucking strong. Um, definitely no regret with taking him to 140 and um, transcending him as much as I have. I would like to definitely take him a lot further. And overall, I've just been having a lot of fun using this unit. And I could say the same with a lot of the units that I've taken to 140. I feel like they just have their place already, but it definitely just, you know, pushes them over the edge and just makes them a lot more useful in certain areas. Dwayne is somebody else I think I've just had a lot of fun just, you know, putting him in a dark team and just having him do his thing. The only one here I haven't really been using is Whisper, and that's mainly because I don't have Anima, I don't have Demon Wall, or a proper TMR that would give her, like, more movement or haste or something like that, while also increasing, like, some kind of defensive stat. She mainly just relies on her uh, Divine Shelter, and aside from that, like, maybe I can use Spellblade for maybe some kind of Spirit buff, but people just mainly seem to use physical units, and, I mean, with great reason for sure, the better units in the game are definitely physical damage deals. But aside from the 140s, what I'm really waiting on is for uh, Dark Fina to get her 140. That's something I think is going to definitely, you know, make her a lot more useful, especially on just, you know, dark PvP teams. And when the time comes, I do want to eventually get Queen Mashiri to 140 as well, just to make her more useful, you know, deal more damage, things like that. I think are going to be pretty important for her. She's, you know, definitely a good unit outright. But aside from that, man, I really have not 120 like anybody here lately except for Noctis and um, Mediana, but the only reason why I really even took her to 120 was mainly to finish her challenge board. There were a lot of good rewards in there, so I feel like it was kind of worth it, especially for where I'm at in the game. But aside from that, I mean, I don't really use her for, you know, any kind of content or anything. I think I have enough ice units and it'd be really difficult for her to replace anybody. Although there are some units that I did recently get to 115, I don't really feel like it's that big of a deal to mention them. I think the bigger deal would definitely be Winter Revive. Now I can use her in the barracks as well as Winter Luartha to kind of help build each other and you know I'm working on uh, Winter Ramada as well so that's somebody else that kind of you know would help get those mind spheres and just build all three of them up at the same time and I plan to pretty much do the exact same thing for King Bradley. I do have Alphonse as well as obviously everybody got Edward so I'm gonna probably put all three of these guys in the barracks you know build them up get them to 99 and then um, work on them to get them to 120 together. I think it would just be easier that way and having three units that share mind spheres is just you know definitely something that is going to help benefit building them up. So the biggest difference that you will see here are definitely going to be the cards. I got a lot of cards done in between the last periodic check-in, so you're going to see a lot of limited stuff here, uh, some things in the general pool here that you didn't see before. I am currently working on this card, and I plan to get it done before the event is over. I just pretty much wanted to ensure that I got King Bradley before I started focusing and trying to finish this card. Same thing with the Ties of the Bonds of Brotherhood. This is another card I highly recommend that everybody gets done. The Awakening Bonus is going to give you that 50% attack up, and that's going to be pretty useful for uh, particular builds or particular units that you want to team up together, maybe in a rainbow team. So if you're having difficulty beating that last mission and trying to get all the shards there, just beat the second mission and uh, keep farming it while you're trying to go back and forth with your raids. I feel like that's going to be the most efficient way. And since I'm not covering PvE anymore, because I feel like those videos weren't really getting a lot of support, I'm just not going to uh, really try and cover the PvE mission and uh, do a how-to or anything like that. And another reason why is because I feel like we just have different units, we're at different places in the game, so maybe me showing you how to beat it really wouldn't be all that helpful anyway. I do, however, want to take this time to kind of talk about the raid, and um, just like I said, another reason why I made a video covering it, um, one of the things that kind of burned me out in the game. I'm not sure if the devs like actually play this game or like actually try to like farm things for like a long period of time, but if they were to just add like some kind of auto feature or something like that, I feel like it would just make the grinding not as difficult, or maybe if they were to just make it to where you can get more than 10 encounters, I feel like if they could just bump this up to maybe 20, 30, something just higher than 10 it would make it a lot more bearable I would assume it wouldn't be as much of a headache 
and not so much back and forth with uh, trying to go from a mission back to the raid, get your 10 encounters done, then go back to the mission. It's just highly repetitive and just really annoying. But at the end of the day, I do recommend that everybody finishes it. Just uh, mainly get the card if you want to stop there. But if you don't have it yet, you probably do want to get the Brigadine plus six. This is going to be pretty big as far as um, a defensive build. You're getting that AOE and that HP. So if you want to stop after getting the plus six, that's something else because I feel like that new piece of equipment, it's kind of niche and mainly going to be useful for the FMA units. So I would have to say that this piece of equipment is the only must have that I would truly like recommend to everybody. Aside from that, that's pretty much it, man. Like I said, I've not really um, been working on much aside from just trying to like, you know, backtrack, get a lot of these units done, finish some of these cards. I really only need like a thousand more biz to finish that FMA card that I have. And I'm at a point where realistically, I'm just going to start saving my viz because i'm not too hyped for the uh, final fantasy 5 collab there are no real units there that i have like any nostalgia with or anything they may be good so i can see myself slow building like the free unit or maybe i get somebody off of the free tickets that they give because i feel like the fma collab to me was definitely not generous i had to uh, definitely pity for king bradley so i guess you can say that i'm at a point where i'm playing the just in case if they were to do anything when it comes down to kingdom hearts i definitely want to have as much viz as possible so I can just clear that banner out or clear out the whole collab and get everything that I possibly can from it. But with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope to catch you in the next one. Take it easy.